Don't sleep on Denver Broncos veteran safety Kareem Jackson as he's back with the team for yet another season. Will he be in every down safety? Kareem says, why can't I be? Plus, could the Broncos get a new potential stadium when the new owner arrives? A process that will take years, but we break down and we analyze the pros and cons and much more on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Good morning, wherever you're at. Welcome back into a brand new episode of Lockdown Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast here on the Lockdown NFL Network, your team. Every day from the South Stands to the End Zone, I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke. Joined alongside by my co-host, Sarah Bettinger. Both of us, we cover the Denver Broncos for the Lockdown Network and Nine News. Broncos country, thank you so much for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. Free to available everywhere you get your podcast and audio format or also here watching us on YouTube. Do us a favor, though, if you haven't done so already, if you're a member of Broncos country, make sure you hit that subscribe or that follow button so you never miss out on a day's worth of Denver Broncos news, content, and coverage. And Sarah, on the build up to the NFL draft, we are officially 24 hours away from some team being on the clock, not the Denver Broncos. We we'll still have to wait a little bit more for that. The build up for the draft is here, but you know what? The Broncos this week, they're focused on practice. Yes, practice. And obviously yesterday at the UCL Training Center, we got to hear from defense coordinator Ajiro Evero and also Kareem Jackson, Javante Williams. There was a lot of stuff going on here. But before we get into all that and we react to what those guys said, Broncos could get a new stadium by, you know, in the next couple of years, three, four, five years, potentially after the new owner comes on. A very interesting turn of events here. And I know that there's mixed reviews here by Broncos country on that. Right. And you know what? The Broncos have seen these other teams these last couple of years. They're they're picking up these veteran quarterbacks and winning Super Bowls in their home stadiums. I mean, a new stadium could mean that the Broncos maybe eventually host a Super Bowl. So, man, I mean, maybe they're maybe the gears are turning there. They're like, OK, Tom Brady goes to the Bucks. They win the Super Bowl in Tampa Bay. Matthew Stafford goes to the Rams. They win the Super Bowl in L.A. Let's get a Super Bowl in Denver after we get a new quarterback and see what happens. But in all seriousness, I mean, I think this is a really cool thing. Like the Broncos Stadium, it's, you know, for me, it's iconic. It's the one that yeah. I've grown up watching them play in. But at the same time, I mean, that that doesn't mean that you can't get something bigger, better, more events able to be, you know, had in this in this new space. And so I think it's a cool idea, Cody. I really do. And I think that, man, with a new owner coming in, that really does necessitate an extremely high cost. I, I think one of the concerns that some Broncos fans have here is like people in Denver locally, they don't want to have taxpayers have to pay the money to fund a new stadium. But like, if you get the right owner in place, I mean, we just saying, I think it was a $2 billion stadium deal for the new bill stadium. That'll be ready by 2026, uh, where it was primarily funded already by, by other people. Like if the Broncos have a very pocket rich owner, whoever it may end up being, Wonder if they'd be willing to fund that as part of a, a new grace period. And the reason this has been brought up is because Broncos president right now, Joe Ellis, one thing he has done is he's teased the idea of a new stadium, something that a new owner would have to decide on. And I agree. I think that there is some splitness here from Broncos country, and rightfully so. It's like you mentioned it. Like we've grown up watching the same when it was Mile High, and all of a sudden then they built the Invesco Field at Mile High back in 2001. Now it's obviously Empower Field at Mile High, but it's been around for quite some time, and the funding costs would be much more significant now to build a stadium than it was back in 2001. But as you mentioned, I mean, I think you do really great things for the local economy in Denver, just hosting a Super Bowl, having that become a tourist attraction for people from all around the world for one week, for a whole week build up for the weekend. That's huge there for the economy, not to mention other things like the World Cup and, and other potential qualifying events, concerts throughout the year. Like it has a potential positive impact on the Denver you know, economy there. But I understand the, the attachment there, and rightfully so. Let's get some reviews here. Now, here's one thing, too. It says estimated cost for a new stadium could exceed $2 billion. It would, if it were constructed, it would likely rec- include a retractable roof. And I also think that the grass part is a huge thing Like for Broncos. Since I'm a big believer in this there. I don't think the Broncos should ever go with actual turf, like synthetic turf. I'm a big believer in you need to make sure that the field is actual authentic grass. If the Arizona Cardinals and the Las Vegas Raiders can bring grass into their stadium, the Broncos could and should too. It also reduces ACL injuries, which I think is super important. So I I like those fans. But what are some Broncos fans saying about this potential move, Sarah? 
Yeah, I think there's some great points being brought up. First of all, Nick says another indoor stadium. Well, that's great, but pretty soon it'll be rare to play football outside like it was supposed to be played in the first place. Remember that game, Cody, the Patriots Broncos game yeah. from the 2015 Super Bowl season just in the snow. That's like that's like old school football right there, right? So, I mean, yeah. the elements are part of the game. We get that, but at the same time, a retractable roof, it does take that away in the winter months. And so like for, I guess for a team like Buffalo, that may be a big deal or like Kansas City that may be a big deal because they really play those things into their favor but for Denver is the snow or cold is that really a home field advantage I think yeah. playing at altitude is enough but <laughs> I like that comment from Nick though I think that's a good I think it's a good point to note at least um, I don't know if the Broncos will necessarily take that into account but it's it's good to be mindful of and then Aaron I am all for welcoming a retractable roof stadium. Sub freezing games suck sitting in the stadium. I appreciate the honesty there because you know what? Yeah. I've been at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City when it was like, I mean, 20 degrees and I was miserable the whole game. Like, and that honestly has turned me off from going to the stadium for games. I'd much rather sit where I've got a fireplace and when I can sit in a climate controlled room and watch the game on TV with multiple camera angles that are just getting better and better. So that's that's how I approach it. I love going to games, but man, if it's not good weather, you can count me out. But I think this last one, Cody from Connor, I think he brings up an interesting point that we've brought up before in the past. Yeah, he says that he is nervous about a potential new owner, and rightfully so. There's a whole bunch of things that come with a potential new owner, a whole bunch of decisions and, and things that you hope don't change, right? But obviously with the new owner and a new vision, things will change in a sense, whether that's structurally, whether that's organizationally, or whether that's with like the aesthetic stuff like the visuals, the stadium. You know, and I think another question would be if a, the Broncos were to ever get a new stadium, where would it be built? I don't think you can remove it from downtown Denver. That's the hub, that's the central. Some people People have thrown, thrown out the idea of DIA, throw, you know, building a stadium next to DIA. I don't know why you'd want to do that. I don't know if that, that would be ideal. I think that would be a nightmare between people who have to leave, you know, who are flying out and people trying to come see a game. And I just think it's a bad idea for DIA. Hopefully this isn't the case, but, you know, maybe they can make renovations to the stadium over the years, like allocate money to be able to do that. Obviously, the stands are going to be something that, you know, after catching fire, they have to replace those. And that's even a tough task right now to get that done before the season and all the suites that were damaged. So I think that they could make improvements and upgrades with the new owner to in Powerfield at Mile High. I don't think they have to change as much. It is a beautiful place to be. Great place to have to go to a concert. I went to a Metallica concert there. I love it, Sarah. Like even the cold weather, you know what? Like I have screws in my knees from playing and having surgery. They flare up, but if the Broncos win, it's well worth it. If they lose and you're like, ah, man, I wish this had a retractable roof. But outside of that, Broncos country, let us know down below in the YouTube comment section or tweet us on Twitter at Cody Work NFL, at Sarah Bettinger, at Lockdown Broncos. Would you be open to a brand new stadium for the Denver Broncos in the future? Let us know down below with your thoughts, the pros and the cons. We're eager to hear that. But Broncos country coming up here in just a moment. We heard yesterday from Broncos defensive coordinator Ejiro Evero as he met with the media following day two of voluntary OTA practice at the UCL Training Center. What were his thoughts on Kareem Jackson's return? How does he view Josie Jewell and much more. We get into that coming up in just a moment. But before we do that, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. That's our good friends over there at BlueNile.com. And whether she prefers a statement piece of everyday subtle elegance, BlueNile.com has fine jewelry options for every mom. Shop high-quality classic diamond earrings, elegant tennis bracelets, or gemstone pendant necklaces today. And if you're looking for fine jewelry but having trouble choosing, Blue Nile has jewelry experts on hand 24-7 available via phone or chat to help you find a memorable gift at every budget and this mother's day give mom something that she'll treasure forever with fine jewelry from blue nile.com and locked on sports listeners get 50 dollars off of 500 and this podcast exclusive is only good through mother's day so once again use code locked on that's one word locked on plus every order is insured and ships free and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside shop stress-free and find your forever peace go to blue nile.com today as we jump into the second half action on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos, real quick, mile high salute Broncos country to all of you that are listening or watching. Thank you so much for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day. If you have a brief moment, if you could leave us a review on Spotify, if you love the show, leave us a five-star review, Apple Podcasts, if you could write a review and obviously leave your Twitter handle in the review, give us five stars, you love the show, it'll help us grow this podcast even 
further to, to more members in Broncos country. We are so appreciative of everybody that takes time out of their day to tune in. But thank you so much. That would help the show continue to grow here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. Sarah, outside of that, the Broncos and Broncos fans outside of the introductory press conference that we had just a couple of months ago, they got to hear from Ejiro Evro here once again. Now that he's been able to be in the building, He's been able to work with the players. And once again, like this is another coach that has some energy to him, some excitement. Uh, and obviously for the Broncos, I think for the defensive side of the ball, the expectations are truly high. But I think one of the most important things, and you've talked about this, relationship equity. You have to have that built in certain circumstances. And Ajiro Evero talked about that in one of his opening statements. He did, Cody, and I love this quote. I absolutely love it because this is a sign of a good leader. He says, on the importance of relationship building. I think when you develop that relationship and build that trust, that's when real teaching begins. And I completely agree with that. Like you mentioned, relational equity or put another way that, you know, if you want to put this on a bumper sticker or whatever, people don't care how much you know till they know how much you care. And I think that that can get lost in the translation when it comes to the NFL because, well, the NFL is a business. But at the same time, anything like this, when you're talking about a team, a team is all about relationships. You mentioned it on a previous episode. I mean, these guys are building camaraderie, going to games, getting out in the public eye. But in the locker room, in the film room, what are you doing to get to know each other? I think Nathaniel Hackett is good about being, you know, that that's that's an important thing to him. That's an important aspect of building the culture of this team. So I really like that from from Ejiro Evero and just the tone that he's going to set. He seems like more of a, uh, you know, he, he has that energy, but he's more of like a business type guy. Yeah. Nathaniel Hackett is, is pretty loose, but Ejiro Evero, I'll be excited to see a little mic'd up from him. I know we got the Nathaniel Hackett one yesterday. I hope we get to see an Ejiro Evero one very soon because I think that would be fun to hear just kind of how he approaches exactly what he's talking about. Not to mention, maybe we won't get to hear a lot of this, but his play calling style, Cody, what did he have to say about that? I love this quote as well. Yeah, before we get to the play calling style, I do want to mention one thing as a coach myself, someone who's coached the game. One thing, and I think this could apply for anything like Sarah, just imagine, or anybody that's listening or watching this podcast right now, imagine that you had to go into a room and you had to teach people. Let's say a room of 10 people, right? And you had to go teach them. You come into that room. They don't know you. You don't know them, but you have to teach them something. It's all about your approach. It's going to determine whether or not they're going to listen. They're going to tune in or they're going to listen, like have your ear, you know, when you're talking or when they're talking, that you're listening to what they have to say, that they feel validated. This is so important in the world of coaching. I think it's super important that that's not lost in that discussion. But as it gets to the whole conversation on his play calling style, he did mention, he says, I think it's very important for coaches to practice what they're going to be doing on game day. I'm with you on that. It's important for me. And that's what I'm taking these practices as, as examples of getting used to the mic and communicating and not only getting the calls to the players in the huddle, but also giving them tips, D and D, which is down and distance reminders and things like that. So I'm trying to hone my skills in as well, which Sarah as a former defensive coordinator, I can tell you this is something that I've done. Like there would be times I would drop an offensive formation on my mirror with an expo marker or a Sharpie, the one that's not, you know, non, you know, you can erase it there. And I would literally call, okay, hey, this formation here, I'm calling this based on, okay, if it's three by one, I'm calling this front, I'm calling this coverage based on that. Here's our check. I would do that in the mirror. I would communicate it out loud just so I get in the, the habit of if I see it, I can call it. I can have a buzzword and then we can adjust to it. That's a hard part of coaching. I don't think many people really understand. Like coaches understand it, but it's tough, man. And so for him to be able to work on this, like you have to. And I think that the same can apply here for Nathaniel Hackett and any coach who's in a play calling position. How do we adjust? How do I continue to sharpen my tool shed a little bit there? And I think that's super important. It's key there. But speaking of a guy who has a, you know really sharp tools in the shed here, let's talk about Josie Jewell. A zero Evero. Had a lot of great things to say about Josie Jewell, which Sarah, you and I have been talking about here on the show. As to me, this is why the Broncos brought him back. There's things in his game that make sense, and Ajiro Evero confirmed that yesterday in his press conference. Yeah, and one of those guys, he, Josie Jewell, that's going to be one of the guys that's hearing from Ajiro Evero, the you know the the D and D. And I'm glad you clarified that, Cody, because as I'm reading the show script. I, I, I'm thinking to myself, all I can think is Dungeons and Dragons, you know? So I'm like, man, he's giving his players Dungeons and Dragons reminders. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but that is where my mind went and I couldn't get off it. So thanks for clarifying that, Cody. That's why we love you. That's why That's why you're here. So good stuff. But Josie Jewell is going to be a huge part of this defense. And Ejiro Evero, this is the benefit of having these coaches. Like they've been around. They've been scouting these guys. And he, he said that. He said, I studied him coming out of college. 
Iowa, shout out Hawkeyes. He didn't say that. I said that. He said, I studied him coming out of college a couple years ago. He's a smart guy, instinctive guy, a little bit better athlete than he's given credit for. He just He's just the epitome of what you want in terms of running the huddle, leading the charge, and getting communication done. So if there's a Dungeons and Dragons meeting taking place, Josie Jewell is going to know exactly <laughs> where and when that's happening. If it's third and four, the down and distance, he's going to know and he's going to communicate that. So I think that's exactly, that's a spot on scouting report of Josie Jewell. He's a better athlete than advertised and he's a great communicator out there on the field. That's why he played and started all four years for Kirk Ferentz at Iowa and was a uh, frankly a star for Iowa he's kind of an Iowa football legend so he's always been a very smart player and I think that others have talked about that George Payton talked about that he's instinctive he may not be the most athletic guy even if he is deceptively athletic he may not be the most athletic guy but he's going to beat you to the spot because he's so instinctive and I love that Ezero Evero pointed that out because that's a huge reason why Josie Jewell is going to be the top inside linebacker for the Broncos this year now we're excited to see what Josie Jewell can do inside this defense for Ejiro Everell. Obviously, the stakes will be very high with all the talent that is on this Broncos defense inside of the ball. And what will they do in the NFL draft? That is a whole different question, a whole nother episode that we will obviously be doing once the draft picks are made official this week for the Denver Broncos when they're on the clock at pick number 64. But, you know, what about Kareem Jackson? Don't sleep on K-Jack. He believes he could still be in every down safety. And he kind of shared his thoughts as to why. And we'll even break it down a little bit more coming up here in just a moment but before we do that let me tell you about built bar the sponsor of today's episode lockdown broncos built bar is the best tasting protein bar that is out there on the market today each bar contains 17 grams of protein 130 calories and only four grams of sugar plus they have nine amazing original flavors plus the occasional limited time flavors and they just released the built granola bars with three flavors that you can go check out today at built.com if you need a little bit of extra boost to get you through your day let built bar be what guides you to reach your goal throughout the afternoon if you're feeling sluggish in your office chair you need a workout Built Bar will help get you there with the perfect combination of something that's protein packed and it tastes like a candy bar. That is tremendous value right there. And you can go to built.com here today and you can get 15% off your next order when you use promo code LOCK15 at built.com. Once again, promo code LOCK15 gets you 15% off at built.com. All right, Sarah, as we jump into the fourth quarter action on today's episode of Lockdown Broncos, we'll talk about Kareem Jackson. I wanted to open up this segment here with a joke that was sent in by a Broncos fan and listener of the show, Semi Dreddo on YouTube, and all credit goes to him. And I asked him for permission if I could use this and credit him. He said, absolutely, go for it. He says, how do you separate the rest of the AFC West? And I loved the response there. For anybody that's wondering, you hack it. Okay, that might be a little you know, cheesy there. I, I'm okay. I'm a, I, I'm a sucker for cheesy jokes, but you hack it. And obviously the Broncos have Nathaniel Hackett now. Could he be game-changing inside this AFC West division? We'll have to see. But Sarah, let's talk about a guy who is game-changing in the AFC West and has been very under the radar. And I think the last three years has been one of the best safeties in the game and hasn't gotten enough conversation, hasn't been talked about enough. And that's Kareem Jackson, who's back, and he met with the media yesterday. It was nice to see K-Jack back in uniform. Uh, before we get into what Kareem Jackson had said, I do want to touch on what Ejiro Evero had said about Kareem Jackson. He was asked a question about him, and he said, you know, that he's glad that he's back. He says, it's vital. First of all, let's not be mistaken. He can still run. There's still a lot of juice there and still a lot of playmaking ability there, just all the intangibles as well. Just being able to be a locker room presence, be a veteran presence, to be a guy that's in charge of the communication and all that stuff, it's invaluable. Happy to have him. Kareem Jackson is one of those glue guys that George Payton has talked about in that locker room. So it's great getting that praise there from your defensive coordinator. But, you know, Kareem, you know, also met uh, with the media and he had a lot of great things to say about Coach Evero as well. What did he have to say about his new defensive coordinator? Well, he said he's very vocal. He's very detailed as well defensively. That's huge for us, especially for the younger guys with his detail in every aspect of the game. He's pointing out little things and getting guys to realize it. And he's been huge for us. Just in these couple days that we've been on the field, I think him preaching that and us preaching the same thing is definitely going to help us. So you like to hear that from Kareem Jackson, who's obviously a veteran leader on the team, and he's somebody that everybody's going to be looking to. Just like on the offensive side, everybody's looking to Russell Wilson, talking about how he's obsessing over memorizing the playbook and different things like that. I mean, Kareem Jackson has to set a similar tone for these young players because, yeah, Ezero Evero is a young coach, but Kareem Jackson – 
being a veteran player, that's so, that's such an important dynamic in a working environment like this. Kareem Jackson being a 30 plus year old veteran player, really trusting a younger defensive coordinator who's his it's his first time being a defensive coordinator in the NFL. I mean, that's huge for the younger players to see. Kareem Jackson setting the example, being willing to learn, being willing to do all these things, being willing to set the example in everything on and off the field. I think that's absolutely huge. And I love that Kareem brought that up about his new defensive coordinator. And he also talked about the fact, man, yeah, he is getting old. Let's just elephant in the room. Kareem Jackson, I mean, you and me both, brother, we're getting older. Yeah. And uh, and you know what? I, I think that that raises questions from a lot of people about, you know, can he be a full-time safety in the NFL, especially after last year? Like before last year, Cody, we didn't really see Kareem Jackson getting hurt as a result of playing as physical as he does. But then last season, he, he had that shoulder injury pop up. So he responded to those questions about whether or not, hey, can you be an every down safety still in the NFL? Yeah, his response was simple. Why wouldn't I be? And I love that mentality that he has there. But, you know, your spot on the two about Kareem is like, he, the way that he throws his body at people, like he is a heat-seeking missile. There were a couple times he had to get taken out due to concussion protocol, which had nothing to do with him and everything to do with the independent evaluators that would pull him off the field. But every time, like I think there were two instances, the Pittsburgh game, I think there was a Chargers game where he came off the field, had to get evaluated, came right back in. Or it was the Philadelphia Eagles game. It was one or the other there. The Pittsburgh Steelers one was definitely one of those games. But Kareem is a guy that he played through injury last year. You know, he had a, he had a shoulder injury. His back was kind of messed up a little bit last season and he's just been trying to take care of his body here in the off season he's been putting a lot of work in rehab recovery but he's good to go he's a hundred percent can he maintain that throughout the season i think that's the question that many people have i think football fans for the most part have these questions about players as they get older but i think for where kareem is at ironically enough sarah when cornerbacks get older in the nfl you know what everyone says to do move them to safety kareem moved to safety at a young age when not he didn't necessarily need to it was more like hey this is what's best for the football team kareem embraced that and he became one of the best guys there now i imagine his role will evolve a little bit more. I think he'll play a little bit more in the nickel. I think he'll play some of that dime backer. I think there will be times that he plays in the back part of the box. And there might be times where you see Caden Stearns to Kareem Jackson on the back end and Justin Simmons playing somewhere in the box. Like they have so much scheme versatility right now to be able to mix and match and do a lot of different things. But man, you know, Broncos country don't sleep on Kareem Jackson. And like I said, for the last couple of years, Sarah, you could make an argument that he and Justin Simmons have been one of the top two safety duos in all of the NFL. And they've had the plays, they've had the number of snaps and durability to even support and back that so you know what i'm not gonna go against full metal jack that man is a freaking beast and i'm excited to see what he can do this upcoming season here and obviously the buy-in inside that locker room he'll be a monumental leader that means we get another year sir of k jack tv which i'm super excited about maybe we'll get him on the show here at some point maybe we'll get some interviews going on with him but I appreciate you as always, Sarah, for joining me on today's episode of Lockdown Broncos. Just a mile high salute to everybody in Broncos country. Both Sarah and I, we appreciate you so much taking time out of your day to listen to us or to watch us on your favorite podcast provider or on YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button or that follow button if you haven't done so already. It would mean the world if you could leave us a review of the show. It helps us grow to more people in Broncos country. And if you know somebody who's a Broncos fan that doesn't listen to Lockdown Broncos, send the podcast over and let them decide for themselves if that's something that they want to get part of. We love the community we built here, and we're going to keep on going. Broncos country, we have you covered all week long here on the Lockdown Broncos podcast. We'll hear from Justin Allen. We'll hear from Dwayne Stukes this week as the Broncos continue to practice in their lead up to the 2022 NFL Draft. Seth Benninger and myself will be back tomorrow for a brand new episode of the show.